Hi and welcome to the Earth Science Classroom, looking at earthquakes in this uh, video series and in more particularly seismograms. And these bad boys are basically our paper version of the earthquake, right? So once the earthquake happens, these seismic elastic waves travel through the Earth. They are then picked up, they are sensed and picked up and monitored and, and uh, remotely picked up by these seismic stations that could be anywhere around the world, could be universities, government buildings, you name it, right? And they pick up the vibrations and movement of the Earth caused by these elastic waves and seismic waves going through the Earth at certain speeds. And as we learn in class that, and in different videos, that uh, the P wave is the primary, it's the fastest. Once the earthquake happens at the focus or hypocenter, it's going to radiate and propagate out in all directions. And the second the earthquake happens, all these waves are released. Now the P wave is the fastest and will get to the, get to the seismic station where it's recorded first. Then will come the S wave, secondary, and then uh, there'll be a period of time, and there'll be a surface wave uh, collaboration that comes through um, later on at that seismic station. There are different um, waves also that come later on called tertiary waves, but that is a different video and uh, a higher level as well. So here we have a seismogram. This is the, the, the machine, the seismometer that uh, creates this this uh, this data, so seismometer, okay, which is inside or located in the oh, seismic station somewhere on the surface of Earth. Now there'll be hundreds of these, and in different locations, and they'll pick up the different um, uh, seismograms based on that location. And we can use this, we can use this seismogram to figure out and work backwards. We have the data, now how do we extrapolate or take out and figure out what is actually happening here? So we know we have the P wave. We know we have the S wave. Well, which is which? Well, the P wave is, is the fastest. So therefore it will arrive first before the S wave. The S wave is still quick but it, it arrives after the P wave. Now these seismograms have uh, time stamped into um, the, the data. So this green line right here, this green line right here is time. Okay, and we have seconds. So the minutes, but this happened over a short time, so it's seconds, right? Break it down. Sorry, actually minutes and seconds. So minutes first, and then I'll see seconds there as a smaller uh, unit of measurement. So we have this, this black line that's all squiggly and wiggly, right? So over here is the start. Now, how do I know it's the start? Well, because we have a smaller number for time. So obviously time moves in a certain direction. Um, so here we have 20 minutes, 25, 30. So this is the beginning. This part right here, this part right here, okay, is called background. Background vibrations, background murmurs, background tremors, background vibrations. So the earth is constantly shaking, humming. Uh, there's a certain kind of uh, rhythmic cycle to the earth in terms of the tectonics and the movement and convection currents and, and uh, all this stuff works. So the earth is constantly shaking to a certain extent. We don't always feel it. We feel it when they are, they are larger. Uh, magnitudes and energy being released through earthquakes, but generally there is a background low level vibrations which these can pick up like this. Then what happens is in comes our P wave. So we'll add it right here. Here is our P wave. This is when the sensor picked up the P wave. So the first jolt. Now, 
this doesn't have that, but on some seismograms, on most of them, you'll see that they'll be, I'll do it in green, I'll do it in uh, purple. They'll be on one axis here, okay? You'll have the vertical axis, you'll have uh, displacement. Displacement, or which is the amplitude, and it'll be expressed in millimeters, which is the unit. So the zero here, let's say 20, 50, 100, 200, like that, okay? So this displacement is how much the needle that is creating this seism seismogram is moving. And that denotes that, it, that shows or expresses how much energy and movement is in that part of the earthquake um, or seismic wave. And generally, the P wave has a smaller magnitude, a small displacement. Okay. And then we get this kind of like um, some larger, some smaller peaks. Okay. Some higher amplitudes. But over here, this is our S wave right here. So once we've figured out where the P wave is, the S wave is, we can see the amplitude and the degree of which the displacement happens in millimeters. We can see the time. We know when it starts and when it uh, ends, basically, from this seismogram. So a little bit of math now. We take the S wave arrival time, which is around, let's say, 30 minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. Then we subtract, subtract the P wave arrival time, which is around, let's just generalize and say it's uh, 21, 21 minutes. Okay. So the difference between this would be nine minutes and 30 seconds. So now we have a time delay, a difference of when the P wave arrived, when the S wave arrived. You can also just count the minutes in between if you want as well. So either one is fine. You can either publish the times or just add or just see the difference on the green time um, scale right there. Okay, so we have nine minutes and 30 seconds. So that's what really is the purpose of this seismogram is to work backwards, take out the information we want, and then use it to calculate how far away the earthquake was from this seismic station. And also, if we look at this in terms of the surface waves, which are a lot, lot more, um, a lot more energy is released during the surface waves, which are the, 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 the L wave and the R wave, that we can see a displacement, and we can use displacement and the arrival and the difference times, so the difference between the P wave and S wave, we can calculate the magnitude of this earthquake, which we'll get onto in a different video. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, leave a comment, and look forward to seeing you uh, in other videos for earthquakes and on this channel.